بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters, this is your host, Gheba Ar-Rumani Alhamdulillah, we are living in a society that has provided for us a lot of easy access to information We can access information for our education, we can access information for news, uh, communicating with our parents, with our family, with our friends and so on However, this you know, easiness comes with some negative effects and a lot of responsibility. And in our previous episodes, we were talking about social media and the positives and negatives, the pros and the cons of that. And we left off talking about the negative effects that social media can have on a person, psychological effects and so on, and how that can affect, as Dr. Ahmed was saying, the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is ultimately our goal, يعني, to make sure we strengthen the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also gave some positive examples, mashallah, that some people, mashallah, they send like a daily Quran, you know, page and so on that people can read. We have good WhatsApp groups or uh, different groups where we can benefit from it. Inshallah, I want to start with a question, interesting question that has come around. And I've seen it now throughout it's, it's not that popular, but some of the scholars are starting to talk about it. And they say that we should develop a fiqh of social media. What is your input on that? Inshallah, if you want to start. Sheikh Hassan, what do you think? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa mtada bi huda. Indeed, Islam is not a passive religion. So everything that is introduced in our modern times and the times to come, there has to be a solution in Islam going back to the fundamentals, to the Quran and the Sunnah by the understanding of the Rashid's predecessors of the three centuries. So social media is like any media, is like any new thing. There has to be an etiquette, there has to be certain rulings governing how we behave and react to whatever is said on it. And if you recall, when we spoke about rumors, people tend to feel lax when it comes to mm. saying things. Now on the new social media, it's even worse. It is the trend. It is the norm to slander people, to curse their fathers and mothers, unfortunately. And I've witnessed this firsthand. When people differ with me on Twitter, for example, and I don't usually post on Twitter except Islamic stuff or answer questions. Yeah, alhamdulillah, in my social media, like many of the shuyukh, they don't post things about themselves like so many people do. I'm going to the toilet to do a <laughs> uh, 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 one-on-one. <laughs> Update statement. And five minutes later, wow, it was great. But I don't advise you to go where I went for the next half an hour. So... They have everything stated, and it's yeah, any provocative. It's disgusting. Nasty, yes, yes. What I do is, like everybody else, post something that benefits the Muslim, a hadith, a reminder, an answer of a fatwa. Every now and then, you get these, what I call them, the keyboard knights. They are so enthusiastic about jihad and so on, but only through their keyboards, and accuse everybody else of kufr or of irja, or of this and that, and they say nasty things. And I keep on asking them, Akhi, would you allow someone to talk like this to your father, to your parents, to your elders? Is this the way you would like people to talk to you when you're my age? And they are heedless because they're anonymous. And that's a very you good get, point. That's why I call them keyboard knights, because they're knights from behind the keyboard. Nobody knows them. Who they are, yeah. And they're not men enough to come and face you and tell you, Akhi, this is wrong, I'd like to talk. No, they don't have the logic. They could be women as well. Yes, well, no doubt. Yeah. Probably, yes. yes there, are. There, are, there are many of there them are, who yeah. are women, yeah. but 
usually women are much uh, uh, softer, softer and, and nicer in attitude. These people have an inferiority complex, so they tend to take it on these social. They become very vulgar and they swear, and, which is again, you know, Ag again. sometimes non Muslim. Let's uh, sometimes, face it. Yeah, there is yeah. non Muslim. Yeah, Muslim but the, the Muslim the, the, name. But what shocks is that there are Muslims a lot of times. Yes, we, we, we don't want to yeah, any, uh, pretend that Muslims are right. angels. No, there no, are no. lots of course, and of lots course, of, of those who are deviated from the Quran and the Sunnah, and they have no knowledge. And this is the biggest problem. When you give a stick to a crazy person, he does catastrophic things. If you give a stick, what will he do with it? He'll hit everyone with it. These people, because they are given a weapon, a tool, and they don't know how to use it, First of all, they don't have the knowledge or the moral conduct. And thirdly, because it's a place where they can vent their evil desires and ideas, they do what we see. Okay. And that leads us to how important this social media are for dawah. However, what is the rule regarding the use or are there certain limits to using this? Because I think so much indulgence even for dies to spend on Twitter, on WhatsApp or Instagram or that, or this and that, yes, they can see you present and everything. And they even get tempted after some time to have all these selfies and nice pictures and the coverage of their trips and, and journeys and so on and so forth, or their lectures and so on. And they become like uh, self-advertising. This is going to affect your ikhlas. So I think so much of doing anything is just like almost not doing anything, as if this work will go in vain. That's why I think, and I could be sounding ideal if I would say, can you limit your daily tweets, for example, on Twitter into one or two? Is that possible? Yes, it is possible. Can you do the same thing with WhatsApp? Can you do the same thing with posting something on the Facebook or showing a piece on Instagram? and so on and so forth. Or you need to work even harder if you have a YouTube channel or a Telegram. Any of these media, you have to use wisely and you have to be selective and careful what to produce. Sometimes in a hasty way when you post something because you're in a hurry to do something and then you might say it in a way that could be misinterpreted. You regret it. And then you, t oh, I made this mistake. Mm. But already damage has been done. <laughs> it's so bad to come back and try to rectify the situation after it's been exposed and the whole world has received it. Particularly those who are very influential, very present in the lives of people, those who are role models for, you know, for Muslims. I think the enemies of Islam are watching and recording and taking opportunities of any mistake. Uh, mistake, any shortcoming, any misinterpretation that could be possible, other side of what you say. So you have to be very, very careful as a da'i or even just as a normal Muslim. Let me point out to some of the cautions Muslims have to be aware of regarding transmitting hadiths in particular, because we tend, if we see something good or followed by Rawahu al-Bukhari, Rawahu Muslim, Rawahu Abu Dawood, a tirmidhi these great figures uh, which we are very much, alhamdulillah, respectful of. And we depend on them, alhamdulillah, for hadith because they are great in that respect. Yet, sometimes these reported hadiths probably were made up or they're not true or there's something behind. So if someone is fishing for something and, and then we become victims of that and just immediately we transmit this before verifying or making sure that what we do is correct. That's why we have to be very, very careful because we will be asked on the Day of Judgment about anything that we do in that respect. To follow up, I think that the issue of intention is very important and what may define your sincerity or breaks it is what a lot of us target when they say, we want followers. Hmm. So sometimes you sit with da'is and say, 
how many followers do you have on your Facebook? Right. How many friends? How many likes? How many followers on Twitter? And this sounds like a normal question, but there's something hidden so that powerful. this is what yeah. I pursue. And it all depends on the heart. Okay. If you do what you do due to the fact that you want people to acknowledge you, if we are doing this Eligible. on Peace TV so that we would become famous, we have a big, problem. big problem. Who cares what people say about us? We care about what Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with us or not. Likewise on Twitter, likewise on Instagram or on Facebook or on Keek or in Snapshot. Sometimes I feel astonished when I find people on all of oh, these yeah. <laughs> platforms. Where do you find time? So I think this is something that we should yeah, be careful with. MashaAllah, yeah. Zakhman Khair, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back discussing the issue of social media and how it influences the Muslim Ummah. Zakhman Khair.